we're just going to take a few minutes here and look at the scripture together this morning. Um, the uh, the uh, uh, my my own children will, will will provide my clock here because once they get uh, stir crazy, we'll be wrapping it up. So we don't have a whole lot of time. Um, some of you might might be saying amen to that. Uh, and that's okay. You can say it out loud. I won't hear you. You can't offend me. <laughs> uh, but we're going to take a few minutes here and look at Romans 15. And um, I want to look at verse 7 down through verse 13. It says, Therefore accept one another, just as the Messiah also accepted you to the glory of God. For I say that the Messiah became the servant of the circumcised on behalf of God's truth to confirm the promises to the, to the fathers, and so that Gentiles may glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, therefore I will praise you among the Gentiles, and I will sing psalms to your name. And again it says, rejoice you Gentiles with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, all the people should praise him. And again, Isaiah says, the root of Jesse will appear, the one who rises to rule the Gentiles. The Gentiles will hope in him. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you believe in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So may, may, may you overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. You're distracting me as I'm trying to read. Thank you. This whole stir, stirring thing did not last long. I didn't even get to read through the scripture. You know, for many of us as believers, there's nothing more enjoyable than praising the Lord. It, it, it truly is wonderful and awesome and life-changing to be able to praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. To know that we have that privilege, I mean, that's that's why we love God-focused music. It just turn, turns our hearts, it tunes our minds in to praising the Lord. And sometimes in Scripture we have that same response of just the beauty and the joy of praising the Lord. And sometimes we say in our own in our own spirits and our own words, that, God, I wish more people would know the joy of praising and worshiping you. And uh, could not be truer, according to Scripture and even according to this passage about the the privilege and the joy of glorifying and praising God. And the purpose here in Romans is to say that the Gentiles and the Jews will be, will be praising God together because of the Messiah. And it's so wonderful, so awesome. And it provides an incredible purpose and goal for the difficulty that God has called us to as his children. That difficulty is... We were reminded of it again in verse 7 of chapter 15. Let me read that again for you. Therefore, accept one another, just as the Messiah also accepted you. There could not be a higher bar set for accepting each other. The Messiah accepted me in the misery of my sinfulness knowing that I would not ever fully abandon that sinfulness. He accepted me knowing that I would willfully disobey him, mock his sacrifice as one of his followers. I would do this. He, he, he accepted me knowing that I was in the middle of horrible, wicked sin. And that I would not immediately stop all of it. He accepted me knowing that I, for some people, would bring my sin would bring shame to his name. He accepted me knowing that I would 
read his words, understand his words, and then choose to go out and live in such a way as to reject some of his words. This is how the Messiah accepted me when I came to him. And you think of, you think of the disciples. You think, well, the disciples lived with Christ. They, they really got a better picture of all of this. Well, on the one hand, yes. On the other hand, they didn't really understand it well. If you remember, James and John came to Christ with their mother shortly before his death when they realized, the scripture says, when they realized that he was actually speaking of, of dying, literally dying, they recognized, oh, this guy's planning on dying soon. We didn't think he was going to die, but he's going to die. Okay, we get it. So James and John brought this brilliant idea. Well, if you're going to die, and we recognize you're going to die, we have a plan. Sit each of us, one on your right hand and one on your left. In other words, when you're dead, we'll take over the power that you have as, as ruler. We will be your successors. This was after living with him for almost three years, hearing all of his teaching. And their reaction upon understanding that he was, was really going to die was, we'll take over for you when you're gone. Yet Jesus, in his love for them, did not give them the rebuke they deserved. He accepted them where they were at in their faith and instructed them on getting to the next step in their faith. He said, can you drink of the cup that I'm going to drink of? And in their ignorance, they said, of course we can. Pardon my paraphrase, but that's the exuberance. Yes, we can do so, of course. If you're going to give us that level of a power and authority in the whole world, yes, of course we can. Jesus said, you will indeed drink of the cup that I am going to drink of. But to sit at my right hand and my left hand is not mine to give, but the Father's. So in his love for them, he accepted them where they were at in their faith, pointed them back to truth, and didn't give them the justifiable butt-kicking they deserved. Well, this is how he has accepted each of us. In the foolishness of our arrogance. And uh, he says, Ex accept one another in this same way. Well, he's given us the last three chapters, chapters 12, 13, and 14, and now chapter 15, speaking of how we are supposed to accept one another because of Christ. Right? He says, who are you to judge another slave? Before his own master, he will stand or fall. And then he goes on to say, his master, Jesus, the Messiah, is able to make him stand. This is how we are to accept one another. He said, you know, do not, do not cause a brother to stumble over what you eat. Things that are not sinful. Things that do not matter from a standpoint of righteousness versus unrighteousness before God. Do not cause somebody else to stumble. Choose to ignore or limit the freedom that you have. Submit that freedom to the conscience of the brother who says we shouldn't do it for the sake of righteousness. We shouldn't do it for the sake of testimony. We shouldn't do it because it's not worth the possibility of being sinful. And God says, how do you accept that brother the way Christ has accepted you? You love them. And you submit to their desire, to their need. And he says, you do this to the glory of God. And this is the way. This is the path. This is how the whole world, the Jews and the Gentiles, come together to the praise of His glory. How do people become motivated by you to worship God the way you enjoy worshiping God? 
It is how you accept each other because of the Messiah. How you accept your neighbor. And that's anybody you live with, anybody whose path you come across. That is your neighbor. Anybody that you are around, how you accept your brothers and sisters in the Lord is how they are motivated to worship and praise the Messiah. So this impossible, seemingly unbelievably high bar that God has set before us, it has an incredible purpose. A joyous, unbelievable purpose that the entire world, everybody around, would be motivated and excited to worship a God who could bring unity to people who don't agree on the simplest of things, meaning they don't even agree on what they should eat. Don't even agree on the food that they should put before them and stick in their mouth. They don't agree on how which, which one's righteous, which one that pleases God. We have no idea. We can't agree. God says, submit to each other in love because of what Christ has done for you, submit to each other, recognizing you're accepting them in all of their failings the same way Christ has accepted you in all of your failings. And when you live this way, when you choose to do this, the world comes together to the praise of His glory. Now with that, Let's read this one more time from Romans 15, verse 7. Therefore, accept one another just as the Messiah also accepted you to the glory of God. For I say that the Messiah became a servant of the circumcised on behalf of God's truth to confirm the promises to the fathers and so that Gentiles may glorify God for his mercy as it is written. Therefore, I will praise you among the Gentiles, and I will sing psalms to your name. Again, it says, Rejoice, you Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. All the people should praise him. And again, Isaiah says, The root of Jesse will appear, the one who rises to rule the Gentiles. The Gentiles will hope in him. And God, who knows the depth of our struggle finishes with this incredible promise and gift to us. He says, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you believe in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the power of your truth. We're thankful, so thankful, Lord, for the privilege of rejoicing and praising your name. Lord, it is such a privilege. We thank you for that. Lord, we're thankful for this incredible teaching from Romans, or that it's throughout the scripture, but so clear right here that if we want others to worship and praise your name, then, Lord, we must choose to accept our brothers and sisters in Christ the same way that you have accepted us in all of our weaknesses and failures. And Lord, for anybody who is convicted right now about their incredible failing in this area of accepting their brothers and sisters in Christ the same way that you accepted them, Lord, I ask that you would give them the grace that they need to recognize how much love you have shown by accepting them in all of their failures. Lord, reveal, remind, and teach us about the depravity and awful failures that not only have we had, but we still have so that we might be willing to humble ourselves 
and accept our brothers and sisters in all of their great failures. And Lord, the purpose for this, and we rejoice in this purpose, Lord, is that the whole world, everybody around us, might be compelled to worship and praise your name because of the incredible beauty that your love brings to all around. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.